Hello and welcome to a statue review of Ruby Rose from the Pop-Up Parade line. Uh, something I've been quite looking forward to for quite some time now. Uh, it's actually been kind of sat in the corner for a while but I decided this will be the day that we'll open it up. So, in front of us, uh, as we can see, we have Ruby Rose. Uh, Ruby Rose, obviously, the main character from the Rooster Teeth series, Ruby, which is a kind of 3D CG anime inspired series. I hesitate to call it anime because it's not actually Japanese, but uh, it's very much in that vein. Uh, and obviously, you know, Good Smile must have thought the same because they've made something of it. Uh, so this is part of the Pop-Up Parade series, as I mentioned. They're kind of aimed at being more affordable statues. Um, Personally, whenever I see these go up, uh, they're usually £45. I'll put at the bottom what, however much that is in dollars, about $50 probably, which is considerably less than other statues uh, would be of this kind of scale, to be honest. So we're going to take a quick look at the packaging and then we're going to open it up and take a look. So i got to give uh, Pop-Up Parade uh, kudos here. Oh well, good smile. Um, I, I like the minimalist packaging. It, it's quite nice, um, because if you're aware of Pop-Up Parade, they have made statues of loads of different series. So it's kind of nice having fairly fairly basic kind of packaging that fits all types of characters. Um, so yeah, basically all we've got is a bit of red with a bit of black, which obviously is Ruby's colours. There's Pop-Up Parade. Same on this side, uh, the underneath is pretty sparse. And the back is pretty, uh, pretty plain as well. Pop-Up. It uh, says there, loads of loads of Japanese mumbo jumbo, and that's about it. Really, we get a look at her and stuff. Unfortunately, you can't see her very well through this. There's so much plastic uh, around that it's actually kind of hard to tell. But anyway, I'm going to get on my ruby themed uh, box cutter here because it's red and black, and not not because it's purely by coincidence I have one of these. And we're going to open her up. So. Um, Ah, there's more plastic, hang on. Hey, there we are, cool. I should have probably checked that before I started filming, but whatever. Um, so, let's pull her out. Now, there's something I've noticed in that her scythe, Crescent Rose, I think it's called Crescent Rose, uh, comes separately, so you kind of attach it to her. Ah, and there's even assembly things. Let's go ahead and pull that out as well. Um, there we are, we've got the nice popper parade uh, logo at the bottom. I'm going to take a very quick look at this just in case there's something essential I'm missing, so I'll be right back. Okay, so just a quick overview. Um, another kind of sign the Popper Parade is meant for an international audience, to be honest, is all of these instructions are actually in English as well, which is uh, pretty cool. So we got some interesting stuff. Uh, all the little circles denote where everything is pointy and sharp, which is interesting, I suppose, if this is for younger people. Um, and yeah, is just kind of saying, hey, slot that into her hand and stuff. There's an interesting bit of tip here as well. I don't know how well it's coming up on camera, but basically, if it doesn't fit in well, then you can warm it in warm water, which is a tip uh, I've used once or twice with figures that uh, just don't fit things they're holding or whatever. Um, it's pretty good. Obviously, don't, you know, don't submerge it in hot water for a very long time or else the paint will run and stuff uh, but you know it's always a pretty good tip anyway I'm going to open her up now and I'll be right back so I'm sure you guys don't want to see me pulling her up the plastic all right I've opened it up uh, it's actually pretty well laid actually there were like kind of three layers as it were there's uh, ruby the base on the bottom and then crescent rose is actually behind her in another layer so uh, kudos to that really this is it's really well packaged, it's quite secure, which is quite nice. Anyway, I'll stop gushing with plastic now. So this is how it comes, basically you've got Ruby, and you've got the base, you've got Crescent Rose and the rest of the handle. Uh, I presume that's where it is anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble her now. Again, I'm probably not going to show you guys the assembly process because there's, no, there's no point in that. It's, it's pretty straightforward, you slot her onto there and slot this into her hands. Uh, so I'll be back in a second. All right, I am back and I have assembled her. Uh, so I don't know how I missed this specifically, but uh, Team Ruby's uh, icon is in the background there. 
It's a nice little touch. Uh, again, very kind of minimalist. It's You know it if you've seen Ruby. If not, it just looks like a rose. Um, and yeah, and she is complete. So we're going to go take a look at the pop-up parade uh, Ruby Rose up close and personal. Um, so first thing, I believe they all come with the standardised base. So they're all kind of this shape. I think it's so they can like slide together, not necessarily slot, but you know. Obviously I think Ruby would be more difficult to just leave next to a base because she's got crescent rose sticking out, but still, um, pretty cool. So yeah, so the base itself is kind of deep red like roses, basically. Um, and then going up from there, we've got her boots, obviously, with the red lining. Very nice, very uh, detailed and stuff. It's got the the lines you'd expect to see in kind of a leather piece of boots or whatever. You've got the um, strapping as well. We'll look at Crescent Rose in a second, separately, basically. Um, her tights look like tights or trousers or whatever. Um, I'm not fully sure. Um, so we'll move up to her skirt, which has a ton of frills, as you can see, all around. Uh, no, you cannot see what panty she's wearing. Um, and yeah, the I, I quite like the fabric uh, effect on the skirt and stuff. It sort of, it, it flows decently well, I think. It sort of, it is, it, it, it's dynamically moulded. It does look like it's sort of folded as it would in action. Uh, we've got, oh, let's see if we can focus on this. There we are, there's the belt buckle with Team Ruby's insignia on it. I, I assume so, anyway. Uh, do all of Team Ruby have that belt buckle? I don't know. She's got a pouch where she keeps things, clearly. And some darts, which I believe she used, especially in the first few series, didn't she, I think? It has been a while since I've seen Ruby, and I've only seen up to Season 7, because I think Season 8 is on the Rooster Teeth website only, which is a... Interesting move after removing it from all streaming platforms. But anyway, let's not get into that. We've got the red stitching and stuff on her corset kind of thing. Um, the sleeves also have a few frills and stuff. Very nice, kind of keeping in theme. Uh, and again, you know, the, the cloth looks perfectly uh, fluid. I will say, I think I am kind of comparing it to Ban Presto's figures here. And the cloth looks a bit more uniform and static. But, to be fair, she's not really in a very dynamic pose. Uh, however, it's not fully the case. Let's take a look at her face first, which I think is pretty darn good. Uh, I, I'm sure maybe a higher price point statue may have a slightly better face, but the eyes and the hair, I think, are pretty darn nice. Um, it's exactly what you want. She doesn't have very ornate or like, complicated hair anyway. So to be honest, we've got, you know, the little tips as they taper off there. We've got the bangs. Um, you could easily tell this is Ruby. If uh, And they've even modelled her ears, which would be strange if she hadn't, actually. I, I don't know why I even brought that up. Uh, so we've got the two kind of brooches that hold on her early season uh, hood. Obviously, she changes this later on. And... Um, so this is where it does stand out a bit more. Um, the cloth does look like it's folding pretty well. Uh, it's, it's quite dynamic and everything as it's ruffled there. And we'll go around. So, yeah, that's the hood there, the like, tapered off hood. There's obviously down at the moment. Um, and then we get on to the cape, which if you've seen my statue reviews, you'll know I'm a sucker for capes. And to be honest, I'm quite digging this as well because... There is a bit of shading. It, admittedly, it makes the it makes it look a little bit dirty in places, more than kind of dark because like the shadows are a little bit confusing. But I quite like that. I think in terms of capes, that is, I'd say that's on point with Ban Presto's offerings from the uh, My Hero Academia series at least. And, oh, oh dear, hang on, I moved Crescent Rose slightly, I'll get onto that in a second. And yeah, underneath as well, uh, not as shaded or anything, but then, who, you know, who the heck is really checking that? Whereas, yeah, it, overall that's a really nice uh, job, I think. You've got the folds in the cape as well, so it, it's pretty consistent. I think the cape definitely makes it stand out a lot more, and is part of the reason I bought this, because uh, a lot of the statues I have capes, now maybe it's a... 
strange thing I've never considered. And on to Crescent Rose. So, it comes uh, in two bits, as you saw. Uh, so this part here, up to the black there, uh, separates, basically. I guess you could pull it off, but that would look weird. But yeah, we've got um, a nice bit of detailing. Let's see if I can focus that. There we go, yeah. So that's, uh, it, it's pretty well detailed. I mean, there's there's no, it's not an intricate uh, weapon anyway, to be honest. Next, we have the body of Crescent Rose, uh, which is the kind of sniper part of it. Got all the things there you'd expect. We've got the uh, view thing. The, oh dear, hang on, BRB. <laughs> all right, that's a lesson learned. Do not press on this or touch it very much. Uh, so we'll work our way down and then there's the head and there's the axe part, which uh, is another reason I bought this. Honestly, Crescent Rose is a really cool weapon. Uh, probably one of my favourites in just fiction in general, I'd say. Um, it's a really cool over-the-top design. It, it's a high-caliber sniper scythe, like, ah. But yeah, we've got uh, lots of things there. Obviously, there's the gaps and stuff. Now, uh, if, if I was really nitpicking, I may say that sort of the grey and the metal bit are kind of flat grey, um, and Crescent Rose itself isn't necessarily shaded. Uh, so I, I suppose maybe they could have gone for like a metallic glossy look, but admittedly the series didn't have that, so it wouldn't be as fitting for the series if they did that. So honestly, I'm really happy with it. Um, and yeah, here's a look at the back as well. So, the way uh, Ruby stands on her base is kind of interesting as well. Also, you've got the, the double edges there. Uh, so, these are kind of sharp, these bits here. They're very, very thin plastic. So, do be warned, don't be rough with these things, because I feel like, especially that tip there, could snap off if you try doing anything with it, really. I don't know why you would, but... I don't know, if, if you bought this to like customise or paint or something, be very, very wary, because uh, the, the the bits they told you about, the sharp bits, they probably, you know, are not the strongest. So, uh, she has three points, basically. I'll try... No, okay. Well, basically, there's two points at the bottom of her foot there, one point there, and if we go over, there's also a kind of groove where the scythe sits. So it's kind of hard to see without me taking it off and I'm not taking the scythe off again. But basically it kind of sits there between this, which kind of actually put one of my concerns at rest because I was a little bit concerned that having this just lie on the base for, uh, for a long amount of time might either wear away paint or maybe cause it to slip or something. But having this little stand here honestly is pretty interesting and a good idea i think the only downside is definitely make sure when you're assembling this if you buy it to follow the instructions because i highly recommend putting the scythe in her hand first then attaching her to the base and resting it there if you try to do it the other way you're gonna have to push this and bend it and it's gonna feel very weird but honestly overall i'm really impressed with this statue and i drop the camera angle now a little bit and we'll take a final wrap-up kind of review thing so brb all right so i'm back i still need to get one of those rotating base things uh because that would make this segment a lot cooler than me just moving it with my hands so i'm just gonna leave it be um yeah I i've got to say this is my first popper parade statue so i don't really have anything to compare it to apart from other statues i have from Ban Presto and other manufacturers. So I'd say maybe Ban Presto definitely have a bit of an edge here. If you're gonna compare this against the um, Dragon Ball statues, the My Hero Academia statues, of which are the only two I can really speak of experience, I wouldn't say this is quite on level with the detailing of those. However, I would say it is not far off at all. I think you'd really have to be nitpicking to say this is a lot worse. Um, I'm also a big, big fan of what Popper Parade are doing. They're essentially making statues that maybe they would have at some point made figmas of, but they didn't have the budget or they didn't think there was the uh, customer base for. So I do really love the fact that you can build up, you know, you 
like hundreds of these if you really wanted. Essentially, they're a good version of what Funko Pop have been doing for the last few years, uh, in my opinion. But yeah, anyway, back to the statue. I'm really pleased with this. When I saw the like um, release pictures and stuff of this, I was pretty happy with it. I didn't look too much into it, to be honest. I just saw it was Ruby Rose. It was from uh, Good Smile. It was affordable, £30. Usually if you pre-order them, I've noticed they're a bit cheaper as well. I mean, for £30, I've always wanted something with Ruby on, and unfortunately the other statues have been quite expensive. So this is just perfect. Um, and this has delivered everything I wanted, basically. This is a really cool looking statue. I think even if, to be honest, and I don't usually go down this route, but honestly, even if you've never seen Ruby, but you love the design, I'd still probably recommend this, because this is really cool. It's just a cool character design. Uh, Monty Oom knocked it at the park um, with all of his Ruby creations, in my honest opinion. Ruby, however, is absolutely the highlight. Um, so, on that topic, actually, there are obviously going to be three other statues. Um, Vice and Blake have been announced. I'm on the fence about getting those because the, the character designs I'm not wild about and I'm not going to just buy statues of anything because it's in a group. They haven't announced Yang yet, which I'm annoyed with because Yang is like also my favourite Ruby character. I, I've got quite a few. Um, but yeah, I'd really like a Yang statue, which they're going to announce, uh, I'm sure, soon. Or maybe I've missed it. I'll, I'll need to double check on that. But if I was to give this statue a review out of 10, uh, a reviewer of 10, a number out of 10, I would probably give it an 8. I think there are there are places that it could have maybe been a little bit more detailed or something, but I would not say this is bad or average or anything. I would say this is a really solid purchase, especially for the price. Actually, price considered as well, me even bumping it up to a 9. I don't know. Um, I really like it, and as I said, I'm a big fan of how they made the scythe rest. That's cool. It, it, it basically sets my mind at ease that, you know, in three years' time, I'll, you know, take a look at this statue in depth again or whatever, and I'm pretty sure everything will hold up just as well. So, yeah, that... I think that's about it. There's nothing else to add. Obviously, in the comments below, if you've got any questions or anything, let me know. Or if you bought one as well, let me know of your thoughts. Um, but, yeah, that's about it. It's time to say goodbye. So, thank you very much for watching. Um, I've got other statue reviews I'll leave a playlist for, I've got other things coming up in the future, a bit of mix of everything, so keep an eye out for that. And yeah, until next time, goodbye!